morning. Welcome to Stories by Grandma. Today's story is about Alexander Mack, and excerpts from this story were taken from the book Alexander Mack, the Tonker. Alexander Mack was born August 3, 1679, near Schwarzenau, Schreisheim, in the electorate of Palatia between Mannheim and Heidelberg, Germany. He was a member of a very respectable and wealthy family. Alexander is reported to have secured an education in one of the German universities. He was a Presbyterian educated in the Calvinistic faith and baptized as a baby in the Reformed Church. He had intended to go to college, but the death of an older brother forced him to work the family mill. He studied the Bible and became convinced that the established churches were not following its teachings. The coldness and callousness of the religious-minded people surrounding him caused him to become a dissenter from the faith in which he had been reared. Although there was a law against leading private Bible studies in the home, he defied it. Alexander Mack took for his wife a young lady from the same community and about the same age as himself by the name of Anna Margaretha Klingen. This young lady was born on April 20th, 1680, and became the bride of the thoughtful and forward-looking young man on November 4th, 1700. To this union were born five children, three sons and two daughters. They were John Valentine, known as Velton, Johannes, known as John, Alexander Jr., Christina, and Anna Maria. Alexander's wife and his two daughters died in Germany. In his reading, he became convinced that immersion in water was the New Testament baptism, that a believer was the only proper subject for the ordinance, and that the doctrines and practices set forth in his book, Plain Views of the Rites and Ordinances of the House of God, are such as believers should receive and obey. Accordingly, he and his wife and six others in the year 1708 were immersed in the River Eder, and covenanted together to walk in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. They learned from God's word that ordinances were essential and creed was not. Therefore, adopting the Bible as their guide and rule, they organized a church without a creed, but with all the ordinances as taught by Jesus and his followers as recorded in the New Testament. This new group simply called themselves brethren. One day, while he worshipped with a number of others, authorities broke in and threatened to arrest them all. As a result of this, part of the group set sail for America. Persecution continued, so the other part, including Alexander and his family, fled to the Netherlands. After nine years in Holland, the brethren decided to join the group which had emigrated to America. From Rotterdam, they departed as a congregation, and after considerable time spent in passage, they landed in Philadelphia on September 15, 1729. Historians differ regarding the death of Anna Margaretha. Alexander came to this country with his three motherless sons in 1729. There were other relatives, no doubt, in Germany, but none of his descendants. The first congregation in the New World was organized in Germantown, Pennsylvania in 1723. Great was the joy of the ones who had come to America with the first group when the information was conveyed to them that their beloved founder of their church had made up his mind to cast his lot in with them in the new country of freedom of worship. Some two years after the party's arrival in America, the people of Germantown, in their appreciation for what he had done for them, erected a modest log cabin for the beloved founder of the church. Soon, the Germantown congregation sent missionaries to nearby rural areas. These missionaries preached, baptized, and started new congregations. To these early congregations, several of the America's brethren denominations traced their roots and practices. Expansion across the continent and changes due to the Industrial Revolution caused strain and conflict among the brethren. In the early 1880s, a major schism took place, resulting in a three-way split. The largest branch after the schism was the German Baptist Brethren who changed their name to the Church of the Brethren in 1908. Today, the present church at Germantown stands just back of the lot where the house built by his congregation stood. There, this is where Alexander Mack spent his last years. Johannes Mack, one of the sons, inherited the house after his father's death and used it to further his trade as a stocking weaver. Later on, it became known as the Old Weaver House.
Alexander Mack passed away in this house on January 31, 1735. Alexander Mack was a firm believer in the doctrines of the church and would not stand for innovations. However, he was a very meek and humble man. His humbleness and meekness did not conceal his great wisdom and understanding of his fellow men. While he never antagonized anyone, he always held firm to the faith he loved. There is in Germany today an old mill in which Alexander Mack is supposed to have worked in 1710. One of the prized possessions of Bridgewater College in Bridgewater, Virginia, is one of Alexander Mack's Bibles. There are notes in the margin evidently made by the hand of the founder of the church. This book is well preserved and is kept in a glass-covered box in a fireproof safe. He left this Bible to Alexander, Jr., who, at his death in 1803, left it to the Germantown congregation. It passed through several hands and eventually was donated to the college in 1911. My mother, with her parents and siblings, were members of the Church of the Brethren in Carleton, Nebraska. Alexander Mack was my mom's sixth great-grandfather. That makes him my seventh great-grandfather. Thank you. And that is the end of our story today. And we will see you next time. Goodbye.